Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Empower Living Podcast by Empower Life Church. We hope it blesses you. Super excited to be up here. Hello, <laughs> Hello family. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am Leah. My husband is that guy in the back, that handsome hunk. Damon, if you didn't know. <laughs> no, no. I married you with open eyes, so. <laughs> yeah. But as Erica was saying, we did. We went out on an outreach, and there was a few of us. There was about five of us, and we went over to a little pop-up market, and we got to pray for people. And it was neat because people felt loved, and that's how simple it is. It's so simple just to love God, God's kids. And Mike put me on the spot, and he <laughs> he's all, hey, uh, come over here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's all, I'm going to barter with this lady. I'm going to buy this shirt. And if, if I buy it, you know, she's, I, he asked her if we could pray for her. So, <laughs> and he's all, and I want Leah to pray for you. So um, I got to pray with her and bless her. And um, there was also another lady next to her that I got a word for. And so it was neat to see God move. And it's so simple just to go up and ask people, you know, hey, can I pray for you? And, and sometimes it's just, hey, I, can I share something with you? And it's that simple of sharing God's love. And this one lady um, that was sitting next to her, I just saw her love for her kids and just this adventure she had, she wanted her kids to have in life. And um, she ended up, she's like, she's she felt touched, and she's all, wow, she's all, I actually homeschool my kids, and she's all, and I do, I want them to have an adventure in life, I don't, you know, I want them to have fun in life, and, and so it, my word registered with her, and I was also, a homes, I'm a homeschool mom, so it was neat to connect with her and just share God's love, because I don't think she was expecting that, <laughs> so simple, and that's how simple it is. Okay, so my message this morning, I'm honored to share about the fear of God or the awe of God. I'm going to talk about what it is, <clears throat> excuse me, what it is, and look at some people in the Bible who carried the fear of God. So first, what is the fear of God? The fear of God is virtue. It's a reverence, respect, value, adoration, and honor towards God. It's not being scared of him. It's not being afraid to come to him. But it causes you to have an awe before him. It, it actually draws you closer. And Isaiah said he was undone. He said, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. He became undone before God, literally unraveled before God because he saw how great his God was, how glorious his God was. And so he stood in awe of his God. Abraham, too, he feared God. He was a friend of God. God blessed him. He didn't actually have to do anything. Um, the Lord just blessed him. He chose him. And Abraham got to see how faithful God was. He's, he's faithful to his promises. So he knew who his great God was. And that created in him a faith and trust because he knew who his God was. And when God asked him to do something hard, like sacrifice his son, Abraham trusted God. He knew his great God. He knew that he, he was faithful to his promise that generations would come from Isaac. And so when God asked him to sacrifice his son, he knew that he could bring him back from the dead. He had full trust in God because he knew his God could do the impossible. I want to look up um, 2 Samuel 23, 
three through four. David um, heard from God, and this is what the Lord said to David. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over me righteous, over men righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is as the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, when the tender grass springs out of the earth through sunshine after rain. How beautiful is that? He describes the fear of the Lord as like the morning, the sun rising, like a new day. How beautiful that God gives us each day. And that's what the fear of the Lord is. Like how beautiful the awe of God is. It's like that grass springing up new life and that rain that refreshes, that he is refreshing. God is refreshing and brings newness in life. Jesus is the perfect example of carrying the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I even read this last week, Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. As he, was, as he was talking about the fear of the Lord in the scripture, I was like, don't, don't share my message. Wait. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. No, he didn't. <laughs> um, but let's read this. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. It was Jesus' delight. He delighted in the fear of God. He wasn't afraid of his father because he knew the fear of God was a part of God. It was a part of the Holy Spirit that revealed the Father to Jesus. It drew him close to knowing him, that he knew his Father and knew God's will mattered above all else. It said he, did, he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear. He could have looked and feared man, but he feared God. He didn't look at the religious and say, oh man, they're so godly, you know. And he, he, but he looked at his father. He knew he had the fear of God, of knowing who his God was, and that aligned him with God's will. He could see what the Father was doing, not what man wanted him to do, but what the Father wanted him to do. And so it brought this alignment with God to do the Father's will on the earth. And he obeyed without question. I love that because that's what God calls us to do. He wants us to be aligned with him. He wants us to walk in his will because he is good and he is loving. The awe of God was drawing Jesus close, drawing him so close that he would go away and spend time with the Lord. And the awe causes you to worship God and love him. It causes you to, to come undone before him and say, Lord, you're worth it all. You're worth it all. You're worth all of me. I had this encounter, I think it was about a year and a half ago, and God can encounter us anywhere. Like Cambry was saying, God can encounter us anywhere. And I was in my kitchen. I was busy, you know, I had my kids, and I was making dinner, and I had worship music on. So I'm like, Lord, I'm going to worship you. You know, it's been a busy, crazy day. I just need some worship. I just need some time with you, but I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> and so I'm worshiping the Lord in my kitchen and I'm chopping and making stuff. And, and then I don't even remember what song it was, 
But all of a sudden, it was like I felt the Lord come into the room. And I was just, I felt the awe of God. And he's, the Holy Spirit just was in that moment just revealing the, the Father. And I went to my knees because I was like, oh my gosh, the Lord is here. He's here in my kitchen. <laughs> he's encountering me. And I love that God encounters us everywhere. He encounters us everywhere. There's no limitations on our God. And I just had to fall to my knees and worship him because when you feel that awe of how great he is, his love consumes you. His love consumes you because he is consuming. He's a consuming fire. God's so good to encounter his kids. Solomon also understood the fear of God. He asked for wisdom. And many scholars believe that that wisdom, that knowledge he received from God was a divine knowledge, the mind of Christ. He literally was receiving God's divine knowledge for situations. In Proverbs 9.10, going to wipe my nose. Sorry. I always carry Kleenex. <laughs> I think you guys all know that. I'm a crier. <laughs> God created me to feel deeply. <laughs> I have a box. <laughs> I came prepared. I have a box down here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tamara. That was sweet. Oh, okay, Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Solomon knew that the very beginning of wisdom that he received was the fear of God. He knew how important it was to understand this and how foundational it was. If he wanted to rule his kingdom with wisdom, he had to know who his God is, who his God is. And so it brought that clarity of mind, that divine knowledge of who God is. Towards the end of his life, he, he veered off track, but God is so faithful. God always brings us back, right? And so at the end, he came back to that original truth, the fear of God in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Solomon understood and knew that after all was said and done, at the end of his life, he came back to that understanding of to fear God to have that awe of God and how important it is that the Holy Spirit reveals the Father in that way because it keeps us close to God and not man. I love that he says, with his whole duty, the whole duty of man your whole being is what he's saying. With all of who you are, with your whole being, you need to understand this. Fear God. Fear God. Know him. Know him in this way. Reverence him. Respect him. Honor him. He is worth it. Second Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 7.1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It brings a holiness. When you stand before God, it brings purity in your life. It brings holiness. It takes the things that pull us away from God, the shame, the sin, and exposes them. And he's not doing it to hurt us. He's exposing them because he's drawing us closer. 
He says, come to me. Don't let those things turn you aside from me. It's us turning away from him. And he wants to draw us close. He wants us to have that purity and holiness and walk in wholeness. He's so good. He's so good. His desire was always intimacy with his children and for them to walk in wholeness. Let's look at one more person in the Bible, Moses. Moses experienced and understood the fear of the Lord. He met the Lord at the burning bush. He took his sandals off because he felt the holiness of God. He felt the awe of God. He was seeing his powerful God and who he is. And it changed him because he encountered God. He encountered that fear of God that revealed how great and powerful his God was. And so Moses was sent to save the Israelites from bondage. So he goes, gets the Israelites, and he, he takes them through the desert. The Israelites get to see the power of God, but they don't have the fear of God resting on their lives. See, they were raised to be slaves. They were stuck. They were stuck in that mindset that mindset of being a slave. And God took them through all the way to Sinai where Moses encountered God. And so Moses and God are both excited because they're God of them close. I want them to come to me as a holy priestly people. Let's read in... Exodus 20, 18 through 20. All the people perceived smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen, but let not God speak to us, or we will die. God said, or Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. For God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may remain with you, so that you may not sin. Or he says, he's differentiating, do not be afraid, but fear God. He was trying to help them understand that God's testing you. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He wants you to fear him so that you may not sin. Because he knew God was trying to help them. He was letting them experience his holiness so they would turn from sin, turn from the things that were hurting their life, turn from the things that were limiting God. Those things actually limit God. They were scared. They lacked the fear of God and were more afraid of dying. They were stuck in, what if I die? They were stuck in that slave mindset, stuck in that fear of being afraid all the time. They were raised in fear and oppression, and they were stuck in that place. And it's sad because they limited God in that moment. They refused him. How heartbreaking for our God but they didn't have the Holy Spirit too, like we do. We have the Holy Spirit that rests on us, that reveals the Father in us. Yeah, thank you, Lord. The what ifs limit God. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I offend? What if I miss it? What if I look like a fool? See, the fear of man can limit God in our lives. That's why it's so important to understand the fear of God, because God removes those limitations. When you see a limitless God, you will go and do what he says, because you know he's with you, and he does the impossible. 
I want to share uh, a little story of my encounter when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This was in my living room in January 2018. I had just come out of a difficult, well, me and Damon had just come out of a, a hard season, and Damon was w working nights, and so I had my nights. I had my one-year-old and my three-year-old, and so I'd put them to bed, and I'd go turn on my TV, and I'd run to see my next show. I was so excited to see my next show, <laughs> but I was so complacent. I was stuck in a place of just surviving. And how many of you know God doesn't want us just surviving? He wants us thriving, right? He wants us to come out of those complacent areas because I was so stagnant. I wasn't praying, and I wasn't reading my Bible, and I was just stuck in this place of, oh, I'm comfortable, you know? I'm living my life through my shows or games on my phone, and I was so excited to see the next show, but I still felt, you know, the Holy Spirit, he's so gentle sometimes, and I just felt like, oh, I'm missing something. I'm missing you, God, and I knew it, but I was just stuck, and so at the beginning of the year, the church I was attending decided to do a week fast. So I'm like, okay, God, I know that I have felt you more in the past than I do right now. I feel so stagnant. So I'm going to pursue you. And so I fasted my TV, my phone, all social media, all my games on my phone. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to press in. And it was hard because I didn't want to read my Bible and I didn't want to pray. <laughs> It, was, it wasn't until like the third day when I was reading Matthew chapter 3 in verse 11 where it says, sorry, <laughs> he says, John says, I will, one will be coming after me that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And I was like, Lord, I know the Holy Spirit, but what is this fire? Well, that's all I had to ask God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the fire, <laughs> which I didn't realize. He came in. He started to burn in me. I could feel him burning and making me come to life. And it was like this veil was lifted off my eyes. And I could see who my God actually was and how limitless and powerful he is. And I was just consumed by his fire. But I was also, it was like the fire of God's love consuming me and drawing me close to him. He's so good. He started to create a hunger that was just unquenchable. And all fear, all fear left. I wasn't afraid. I was like, his perfect love does cast out fear. Because when you encounter your God and know who he is and the awe of who he is, he becomes limitless. And I was just filled with his fire and his presence and his passion to know him more. And he he started to give me dreams and visions, and I started encountering him. And he started purifying my heart. He started breaking off limiting mindsets, things that I didn't even know were in me. They're insecurities that limited him in my life. Doubt, doubt in myself, and that doubt also was doubting him. And I was like, Lord, there's so much more. There's so much more. How could I limit you? And so he was breaking off limiting mindsets and revealing himself to me. He's so good. He's so good. I share this because when you have the fear of God in your life, nothing else matters but his desires. 
We don't fear man, we fear God. And when we encounter him, we can't but just obey him because we know he's there. We know he is great. We honor him. And we want his will for our life. We obey him because his will is good and loving. And he's faithful to his promises. Hebrews 12, 28 through 29 says, Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Wow. Our service acceptable servants with reverence and awe that it brings us to worshiping him that we receive a kingdom that can't be shaken we see our god and who he is and that this world may be shaked shaken but we're not shaken because that's where we live because we know our god we know his greatness and his power He no longer is just a buddy. Like, hey, God, hey, over there. We're here to worship you. (laughs) He's not just a buddy. He's the almighty God. Yes, he's our friend. He's our lover. He's our healer. He's so many things. But he's our powerful king, deserving of our undivided attention. That when we come into the room, He's already here. He's here. And he wants to encounter us. He wants our undivided attention and focus. And he is worth it. He is worth our undivided attention. And when we worship, we worship with all of our spirit and all truth. The truth of who he is. Help but worship. We worship and praise him and lift him up because he is worth everything, all of who we are. He wants us to walk in who he created us to be, to walk in that fullness. Colossians 3, 23 through 24, it says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. We receive a reward. How amazing is that? An eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ. And everything we do, we do for the Lord and not for men. like to share just one more story. Um, I was challenging myself, and I think this was mm, maybe a year ago. Um, I was just feeling like I wanted to challenge myself. So I was actually inspired by Tamara because she always prophesies over telemarketers and and things. So I'm like, Lord, I want to prophesy over someone. I want a word of knowledge for someone. And If you don't take the risk, you won't see it. So faith equals risk, right? (laughs) So I'm like, Lord, I'm going to take a risk. Um, So I call up the pizza place, Figaro's, and a girl answers. And I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm going to go pick up the pizza. So I hang up, I give her my order, hang up the phone. I'm like, Lord, tell me her name. What's her name? Give me a word for her. And, and so I, I leave, and I'm driving to go pick up my pizza, and I'm like, give me a word for her, Lord. What's her name? And I'm like, Sarah? I'm like, no, that's a no- name I know a lot. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not that one. But then I hear really clearly, Michaela, look it up. And I'm like, okay. So I, I, I pull into the parking lot. I look it up, and it, it means one who is like God. 
I'm like, oh, okay, I think this is from God. <laughs> and so I'm nervous because I'm like, I'm going to go into this pizza place and share this. And I'm like, you know, I'll ask if a Michaela works there. If not, then no harm done. <laughs> and so I go in and I'm all, I'm giving the guy my card and paying for my order. And there's three guys. There's no girl. I'm like, where the, where's the girl? <laughs> and so I ask, I'm all, is there a Michaela that works here? And he's all, yeah. He's all, there's two of them. They are in the back. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm all, well, I'm all, what, who is the one that took my order? Can I talk to her? And he's all, yeah, I'll go get her. So she comes out, and she looks like, like, who are you? <laughs> and I'm like, hi, are you Michaela? And she's all, yeah. She's all, do I know you? And I'm like, no, you don't know me. <laughs> and she's all, do my parents know you? And I'm like, no, your parents don't know me. I'm all, this might sound weird, but I feel like the Lord told me your name is Michaela. And did you know that your name means one who is like God? And she's all, no, I didn't know that. And I asked, I'm all, can I pray for you? And I shouldn't have said prayed because that turned her off. But she's all, no, I don't believe in that. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm all, the Lord, I feel like he wanted you to know what your name meant and that you're created in his image and that he loves you and he sees you. And so she left and I got my pizza and even though I was nervous, I still did it. And as I was leaving, <laughs> I'm like, God is real, guys, because they're watching this whole thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, God, we're doing this. But that's what, when you encounter God, you know he does the impossible. You know he is with you. You know he is for you and not against you. That you live from that place of victory that we do hear God. And he wants his kids to know God. He wants us to know him. Sometimes it's he wants us to know him more than we want to know him. He wants to know us. God's so good. There's so many benefits he has in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to list them off. It says... Oh, no, I already read that. Sorry. <laughs> um, we receive an eternal inheritance. It's the beginning of wisdom in our lives. If we want wisdom, fear God. Divine knowledge and clarity, direction, and we receive the mind of Christ. It creates a purity and holiness in our lives. It causes us to be more like Jesus and moving us from glory to glory. We receive confidence and boldness and security in our lives. It causes us, oops, sorry, I lost my spot. It empowers us to walk in the fullness of who he created us to be. We live in joy and delight knowing our God. It produces an understanding of God's limitless power. And all becomes possible through Christ. All other fear must go. And we become immovable. We become unshakable, fearless. So when you have the awe of God, nothing else matters. Only God's desires are first in our life. It brings alignment to his will and produces a holy hunger it draws us to a place of intimacy daily. And your life is found in his presence because he is the bread of life. He is worth it all. At the beginning of this year, I heard the Lord say, I'm increasing people's capacity. And I'm like, Lord, what, is that? what does that mean? You're increasing people's capacity. And I heard him say, I'm bringing my people back to the fear of God. And I'm breaking fear off of people and removing limitations. 
because limitations stop you from moving forward with God. When you have those limitations, it inc- or when you don't have those limitations, it increases the capacity for God to reveal himself, to carry more of his glory. And I believe that's what he wants to do this morning. He wants to increase our capacity. He wants to remove those limitations so we can carry more of his glory, more of his presence in our lives. We see his greatness and the magnitude of his power, and it draws us close to him because he is love. Passion and love for him will consume us. And all we will want is Jesus. He wants to remove any limitation and replace it with the awe of God to increase the capacity for more of his glory. Will you stand with me? I'd love to pray over you guys. Would the worship team come back up? I do believe the Lord wants to reveal another facet of his glory. He wants that spirit of the fear of the Lord and the knowledge to rest on us. He wants to move us forward. He wants to reveal himself in a new way. And maybe you do feel the awe of God, but there's more. (laughs) He is limitless. He wants to draw you close. He wants you to become undone before him in in his presence. Let's pray. Let's open our hands for our posture to receive what God has. My prayer is that the spirit of the fear of the Lord would rest on us and this next generation that we would experience God's presence in such a way that we are in awe of you, God. Lord, let us come to you undone, God, undone of who you are, God. We live to please you, Jesus, and no one else. Lord, we surrender. We surrender it all, Lord. Break off those limitations. Search our hearts, God. We want to know you more. We want to walk in the wholeness that God has for us, that he created us to be. We lay it at your feet, God. We surrender it all. We surrender it to you this morning. Lord, we want that increased capacity to carry more of your glory, God increase in our lives, overflow in our lives. We love you, Jesus. It's all for your glory, God. Rest on us, Holy Spirit. Rest on us, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. You are worthy of it all. Worth worth every ounce of us, God. We love you with all of our being, God. We know this. We trust you. You are faithful. You are glorious. You are majestic. You are holy. We love you, Jesus. Let's sing to him this morning. Ask him. Ask him to come deeper. Ask him to come in more. He wants to show more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Empowered Living Podcast by Empowered Life Church. We hope it blessed you. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest podcasts. If you'd like to learn more about us, check us out at facebook.com slash ELC talent or check out our website, www dot empoweredlifechurch.org. Have a blessed week.